Hey everybody, John Peterson from John Peterson Photography here, and today I want to talk a little bit about this concept of quiet borders. Really the, the borders around your subject in the image. I'm a big proponent of trying to create a quiet foundation in an image so your subject or your story can come through clear. You know, I often say to a lot of my workshop folks that photography is really a form of visual communication. And as such, you know, we need to pick what words we use, i.e. the elements in our composition, how many there are, how many words you use to tell your story, and like most authors, ensure that all the words that we use support the story that we're trying to tell. The same thing is true in photography, and so I spend a lot of time teaching this concept as well as myself practicing in the field and in the digital darkroom to clean up an image so that my subject and my story is really well articulated. So I've got a great example prepared to show you of, of just a scene and how I walk through this both in the field and then in the darkroom. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here's my original composition that I shot out in the field. You know, obviously the main subject is the water. And I really wanted to capture a particular flow of the water, how it tumbled over the rocks, the silkiness of it all in the context of this green forest. So this was the first frame that I shot. And then I took a pause and I looked at it and I started evaluating what worked and what didn't and if there are things I could do to improve. And right away I noticed some problem areas in the image that may be difficult to fix in post and or they don't really add to the composition so, are there ways that I could get rid of them? And here I've highlighted three of the biggest problem areas that I initially identified. Over on the right you can see I circled some ferns. These ferns were moving. There was a slight wind that was created from the movement of the water, and it was moving the ferns. Now, I could have um, increased my shutter speed to stop the ferns, but guess what? That would have also stopped the water. And I wanted this particular shutter speed for this effect of the water blur. You know, the other solution I could have done in the field was to uh, bracket the images at different shutter speeds and then blend them together. You know, for me at the time, I really wanted to try to capture the shot as best as I could in one frame and not do any blending. So I figured that was a problem I have to find a solution for. The next biggest problem is this uh, stick coming in on the upper left of the frame. Besides just being a visually big object that's jutting in from the side of the frame, it's also relatively bright. And as you know, a lot of our eyes are drawn towards the brightest parts of an image. So any bright things in an image will um, potentially grab the viewer's attention. And then lastly, down in slightly lower on the left is this mess of a hillside. It's not visually appealing. It doesn't add a lot to the story. Is there something that I could do in the field to help minimize this visual mess and create a tighter, cleaner, uh, more articulate composition? So I reframed my shot, and this is what I ended up with. I moved my feet a little bit, I zoomed in a little bit, and I was able to cut out the fern on the upper right, the stick on the upper left, and then I minimized the mess on the bank on the left. I still have captured the essence of, of the shot, which is the water flowing over these rocks. I don't have as much of it, but that's okay because I, I, I feel that this composition is a lot more articulate than this composition. I hope you might agree. So that's what I did in the field to help quiet my image, to help 
remove some of the distractions, and then I got home and got into the digital darkroom. This is where this, this concept of Quiet Borders also takes over. I spend a lot of time teaching my folks when we, when we do image reviews in our uh, photo workshops, I spend a lot of time talking about cleaning up images. And some people think I'm a little uh, over the top, a little OCD around this, but my whole point in cleaning up stuff is to remove distractions, to remove visual noise from an image. And so I spend a lot of time looking for visual noise that doesn't support my subject, that doesn't add to the story, that has the potential to distract the viewer either consciously or subconsciously away from my subject into something else. So as I look at this image, I see a bunch of noisy things that I could clean up. What do you see? You know, and there's, there's three different kinds of, of noisy things. I, I've kind of created these three different categories. One is visual obstructions. So visual obstructions are things that, that jut into the frame, that, that stop the viewer's eyes from traveling around, that may draw attention. Uh, like that big stick that was coming in from the upper left, that was a visual obstruction. So I, look, I work to minimize or eliminate those. The second sort of category of things that I, I look for are what I call specular highlights. You know, as I said, our, our eyes are going to be drawn to the brightest part of the image. And in this case, it's the, wa the white of the water, which is great. But there are other dots of brightness around this image that have the potential to draw the viewer's eyes. If you look up here at the top, you see this stick? It's both a visual obstruction and a specular highlight. It's really bright white. And even though consciously we might not see it, subconsciously our eyes are, are being drawn up to that. Our attention is being taken away by that. So things like that I like to get rid of. You know, there's a really bright leaf right here above my cursor. There's another bright leaf here above my cursor. There's a bright straight line here. There's all these little bright spots. You know, you look down here on the left, you see this bright right up against the edge of the frame. And especially around the borders of a frame, I spend a lot of time and attention because like that bright spot there on the left, it's gonna grab the viewer's eyes. And because we're so close to the edge of the frame, there's the potential for them to leave the frame, to leave the image. And that's the last thing I want a viewer to do with my shot is to leave the frame. So I, try, I do my best to try to keep them in the frame. You know, I've got another bright spot down here. I've got another bright spot here. I got here, here. So, you know, I go through and I identify all of these. And what I've done is I've marked up this image to show you all of the different areas that I think I want to clean up. And what was funny, this cleanup process, it it's an ongoing thing for me as I develop an, an image. I'll do an initial cleanup, then I'll start working on tonalities, contrast, color, light, dark, whatever. Um, and through that, I start to see even more things that could be visually distracting. So I have to go back into cleanup mode, clean those up, and then move forward. The other, the other, uh, the, the last little bit of obstruction that I, or uh, cleanup category that I want to talk about is this sort of tonal interruptions. You know, if I've got a if I've got a, an even tone across a surface and then there's something right in the middle of that that breaks up that tone, that has the potential to grab the viewer's eyes. Let me back up a little bit. If you see this rock right here, it's moss covered. It's a very even tone across the entire face of this rock. And then there's this one bright green spot that breaks up that whole tonal structure. Those are things that have the potential to grab attention. Sometimes they're, they're, they're nice, they're like little Easter eggs. Other times they don't add to the story, I don't want to keep them in, so I make them go away. You know, this rock that's right above my cursor, it breaks up the tonal values of the water. It may add to the story, it may detract from the story, so it's a choice whether to bring it in or bring it out. 
you know, this stick and, and foliage that's sticking out here, it's a couple different categories of things, but it's breaking up the tonal values of the water and hence can grab somebody's attention. So these are all the things that I've identified initially that I want to clean up. Notice that most of them are around the borders. Yep. For most of us, our subject is going to be towards the center of our frame, center of our composition. And as such, we want our viewers to spend the most time towards the center of our composition. That's why I spend a lot of time making sure that the edges of the frame are quiet, are calm, are not distracting so people can stay towards the middle of my shot and and see my subject, can feel the story that I'm trying to tell. That's why I like to consider this concept as sort of quiet borders. Is that I really, really focus on the edges of the frame to quiet those down so folks stay towards the middle of my frame. So, you know, regarding cleanup, you know, you can clean up an image. There's all sorts of great tools out there. Uh, for me personally, I choose to do it in Photoshop. Um, you know, I'll start in Lightroom, do some initial edits, and then I'll bring my images into Photoshop because they have the best engine and the, and the most finely controlled tools, I think, for cleaning up this kind of stuff. Um, Lightroom is a great photo editor. It's made a lot of steps forward, but the, the content aware and control over that is still not where I want it to be. So I go into Photoshop, I do my cleanup, and then I do the rest of my processing. Still in Photoshop, I still choose to work there um, to get to my final image output. You know, even as I'm, as, as I'm talking to you and looking at this, I still see, you know, bright spots right here. There's a bright spot there, a bright spot there. Things that are just noisy. So I went through and I, I cleaned up all of these, and here's the cleaned up version. Notice it doesn't look that much different, if any different at all, from, from the original shot here. But if you really spend some time and look at it, it's a lot more quiet visually. There's a lot less stuff that have the potential to, to grab your attention. So I really cleaned this up, quieted the image down, and then started to work on my processing. And so for this image, it was really just, I added some Orton Glow, um, worked a little dodge and burn, a little bit of color stuff. Um, and then the last thing that I do with virtually every single image is I vignette it. I add a slight vignette to every single image. What does that do? Well, it darkens the borders and it helps to subtly suggest to the viewer to stay towards the middle of the frame. Vignettes also help, uh, they have this really unique effect to add a little sense of depth to an image, which I kind of like. You know, because we're, we're shooting a three-dimensional subject on a two-dimensional media, and uh, whenever we can bring back some depth into the image is really nice, so vignettes do that. So it really wasn't a lot of processing that was done, and I'll show you the process version here so you can see that. Dark's got a little darker, light's got a little lighter. Um, Orton has an effect that way uh, uh, across the image. Um, but, but you can see the vignette. It's just, it's subtle, but it's around the edges because I want the viewer to focus in the middle of the frame. So there you have it, folks. There's a, just a quick little concept around quiet borders and why it's important to clean up the image to try to remove some visual distractions. Um, and one final point, you know, I'm never really quite done with this exercise. Even I, Some may consider me a little OCD around it, but I'm never quite done. And as I finished processing this image, notice this clump of, of yellow-brown grass over here on the left. There's this beautiful green above and below it, and this yellow grass breaks up that beautiful green. And I find it... Uh, it can be visually distracting. So maybe in future edits, I'll go clean that up. Maybe I won't. Um, but it's one thing that after I was done, it really stood out as sort of a glaring, uh, 
this part doesn't really fit with the rest of the, the tonal values in the image and the color palette in the image. And it just, it kind of bothers me right now. So, you know, for me, I'm just, you know, I'm very critical of my images. Um, I like to, I like to open people's eyes to this concept when we're in a workshop and doing some image reviews. Um, and really, uh, you know, I encourage you to, to spend a lot of time looking at your own images and trying to clean up some of the visual noise and be more articulate in your composition so your story comes through clearer and more easily understood to the viewers that are looking at your images. So there you go. If you have any thoughts, comments on this topic, please leave comments below and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.